this week's goal show, a marathon almost run. Zenit St. Petersburg on the brink in Russia, but can they get over the finishing line? Four games left for Juventus, but can Antonio Conte's team hold their nerve and their place at the top of Serie A? Mexican masters Monterrey look to complete a successful defence of their CONCACAF Champions League title. I don't know, I guess it's just part of my nature, but I'm a bit of a, a restless soul. And, and Angie Postacoglu explains why he decided to leave A-League champions Brisbane Raw. First, to northwest Russia. On a run of 17 league games without defeat, Zenit St. Petersburg hosted Dinamo Moscow on Saturday, needing just a point to seal a second successive Russian Premier League title. Luciano Spalletti's team failed to claim the championship the previous week, when they'd earned just a draw at Kuban Krasnodar. In front of their own supporters, they were keen to finish the job. Zenit were looking to their posse of Russian internationals to get them over the line. Half an hour in, one of them delivered. Midfielder Roman Shirokov firing them into the lead. Just six minutes later, Zenit were given an opportunity to double their advantage when Dinamo's Balash Zudjak fouled Vladimir Bistrov. And another Russian international duly delivered. Striker Alexander Kozhakov scoring the penalty. His 22nd league goal of the season. Dinamo had begun the day second in the table. 12 points behind the leaders with four games left. They needed to get back in the match to hijack the home side celebrations. And Romanian fullback Alexandru Eporianu gave them some hope when he reduced their deficit. That smidgen of hope turned to genuine optimism after half time when Zenit's Konstantin Zirianov was sent off for receiving a second yellow card. Yet Zenit held on to ensure themselves of the title with three games to spare. Spalletti left to praise his side's character as a marathon 14-month season draws to a close. Zenit will spearhead Russia's assault in the Champions League again next season as their domestic league begins in August for the first time, in line with Europe's major leagues. This is their third title since 2007, the fourth in their history. Zenit supporters celebrated long into the night. Zenit then moving 15 points clear with three games left to play. The battle for the second Champions League place appears destined to go right to the wire. CSKA Moscow beat their fierce city rival Spartak to move to third, while Gus Hiddink's Angie Makashkala beat Lokomotiv to stay in contention ahead of a full programme of midweek games. In Italy, the title race is far from over. Juventus and Milan are locked in a fascinating Serie A battle. Juve's bid backed by an incredible unbeaten run. Before Sunday, Antonio Conte's team had gone 35 league games without loss, a run stretching back to a 1-0 defeat to Parma on the penultimate day of last season. Looking to extend that and maintain a three-point lead at the top, Juve went to Novara on Sunday a side desperately in need of a win in their fight against relegation. Juve had won 1-0 at Cesena in midweek to relegate their opponents there, and they set about this game in ruthless fashion, taking the lead in style. Mirko Vucinic's technique rather unique, the outcome from Andrea Pirlo's free kick perfect. Marco Borriello had netted his first goal for Juventus in that game at Cesena, made it 2-2 two two with a header from Emanuele Jacarini's cross. Arturo Vidal made sure of three points for the away side when he followed up Vucinic's shot to score. Vucinic then added Juve's fourth as the old lady underlined their title credentials. The result left Navarra on the brink of relegation. Juve closing in on the Scudetto for the first time since 2003. Only defending champions Milan can catch them. They were away to mid-table Siena on Sunday, four days after a narrow 1-0 win against Genoa. 
Antonio Cassano made his first start in six months for Milan. The striker now fully recovered after heart surgery. With Massimiliano Allegri's team under pressure, Cassano delivered a timely reminder of how important he is to their cause, capitalising on a goalkeeping error by Jelko Berkic to nudge Milan ahead. Zlatan Ibrahimovic's strike made it 2-0. The 25th league goal of a very productive campaign for the Swede. Siena ought to have pulled a goal back before the break when a defensive error left Mattia Destro unmarked. Somehow, he managed to make a mess of it. The home team did find a way back into the game with just over six minutes left through Erjan Bogdani. It's only served to spark a late Milan surge. Antonio Nocciarino's solo goal made it 3-1. And Ibrahimovic added a fourth with his second from Cassano's pass. Enough to keep Milan hot on the heels of their great rivals. After a midweek home game against Atalanta, Milan will take on City rivals Inter in their penultimate match of the season on Sunday. Juventus hosts Lecce in midweek before travelling to Cagliari. The final round of the season will see Juve host Atalanta, while Milan play at home to Navarra. Two days after the confirmation of Pep Guardiola's departure at the end of the season, Barcelona were back to their ruthless best. Lionel Messi among the scorers as Barca responded to their Champions League exit to Chelsea with a 7-0 win at Real Vallecano. Real Madrid had beaten Sevilla 3-0 earlier in the day as they edge ever nearer to their first title since 2008. With three games left, one of them in midweek, Real could seal the title before they travel to Granada this coming weekend. Anderlecht look to continue their march towards a 31st Belgian title on Friday as they travel to Genk in the Pro League Championship playoffs. Last year's champions Genk knew they needed a win if they were to have any hope of stopping Anderlecht, but they were one down with seven minutes gone. Brazilian forward Carno taking advantage of some poor defending to put Anderlecht ahead. On the half-hour mark, the visitors doubled their lead. Jordi Cruz's error gave Guillaume Chile the chance to shoot, and he scored his 13th league goal of the season. Five minutes after half-time, the league leaders had all but wrapped up the victory with a third and Carno's second. Tom de Sutter then scored 25 seconds after he'd come on as a substitute to add a fourth and wrap up a convincing display. The victory kept Anderlecht on course to reclaim the title as they opened up a seven-point gap over their nearest challengers club, Bruges, in the championship playoff table. Their nearest rivals missed the chance to keep the gap at the top to four points as they suffered a 2-1 defeat at Ghent. Anderlecht need two wins from their last four games to be sure of reclaiming the Belgian crown. Over in Poland, a mouth-watering conclusion to the extra plaza season lies in wait. For fans of Slontz Groslav, it's a particularly unbearable time. They had seen their team lead the table for a large part of the season before a slump after the league winter break saw their bid for a first title since 1977 falter. On Sunday, they had a chance to move top of the table again, hosting Zagwembia Lubin, a team they'd beaten 5-1 in the reverse fixture earlier in the season. With no margin for error at their brand new stadium built ahead of Euro 2012, Slontz took a fourth minute lead. Argentine Christian Diaz, the creator. His cross turned into the net by visiting defender Pavel Vidanov. And before half-time, Slonsk doubled their lead. Matiusz Setnarski settling the nerves of the home crowd. Then came a response from the away side. With less than 15 minutes left, Arkadiusz Wozniak halved the deficit. 
Slonsk managed to hold on, though, ensuring that the race for the title goes to the last day of the season. Legia Warsaw had begun the day two points clear at the top, but a one-all draw at home to Jagia Launia Białystok left their title dreams in jeopardy. With just two rounds of the season left, only two points separate the top five. The penultimate round is on Thursday with a dramatic final day promised on Sunday. Coming up in part two of this week's goal show, the best of the action from the second leg of this year's CONCACAF Champions League final. And Santos meets Sao Paulo in the semi-finals of the Campeonato Paulista in Brazil. Welcome back to this week's Goal Show. Still to come, Santos face a critical test in their quest for back-to-back -back Paulista titles in Brazil. And Brisbane Raw celebrate their league triumph in Australia. But what for the future after the resignation of their head coach? Few teams in Latin America have had more success in recent years than Monterrey. Their CONCACAF Champions League success of 2011 came after a trophy-laden few years on home soil. Twelve months on from the second leg victory over Real Salt Lake that sealed that triumph, the North Mexican team were looking to defend their title, travelling west to Santos Laguna for the concluding part of this season's showpiece. Two Humberto Suazo goals had given Monterrey a 2-0 first leg lead, and they began as hot favourites here, despite the absence of their suspended Chilean marksman. Seeking their first ever title, competing in their first final, Santos Laguna began the second leg with purpose, in pursuit of overcoming that deficit, only to find Monterrey's goalkeeper Jonathan Orozco in fine form. Colombian Carlos Quintero, the first to be denied, on a night of high drama in Torreon. Jorge Estrada also kept out by Monterey's imperious goalkeeper. Not to be denied before half-time, Santos Laguna finally hauled themselves back into the tie when Argentine Daniel Ludueña found the top corner. Sensing more, the home side emerged after half-time with renewed impetus and Julie levelled six minutes into the second period. Quintero's cross poorly defended, Riva Peralta the beneficiary, and suddenly Monterrey's first leg lead had been wiped out. Prior to the game, Santos Laguna had set a record for the most goals in a single Champions League campaign, with 34 in 13 outings. But having scored two more to bring them back within sight of glory, their luck ran dry. Monterey, who had been tame without the services of Suazo, began to gain some momentum. Walter Ayavai whistling this effort past the post. At the other end, Quintero came within a hair's breadth of completing an unlikely turnaround. Then came the decisive moment with ten minutes left. Neri Cardoso breaking through to crash a deflected shot past Mexican international Osvaldo Sanchez. The deafening silence inside the stadium telling its own story. The away goal leaving Santos Laguna needing to score twice in the remaining minutes. Their chance had gone. Monterrey left to celebrate a successful defence of their CONCACAF Champions League crown. With it, a ticket into FIFA's Club World Cup, which takes place in Japan in December. The last seven finals have now been won by Mexican clubs their dominance far outweighing that of sides from Major League Soccer. Toronto FC were the best MLS performers in the CONCACAF Champions League, only ousted by Santos Laguna at the semi-final stage. Sadly for them, it's not sparked a solid start to the new season in the States. On Saturday night, they travelled to Real Salt Lake, eager to end their dismal run of six straight defeats. Things didn't start well for Aaron Vinter's side when Carl Beckerman pounced after just seven minutes for the hosts following some loose Toronto defending. The visitors didn't lie down, though, with Eric Avila at the heart of their play, the midfielder winning a penalty in the 16th minute. But Torsten Frings failed to convert the spot kick. 
After the break, Toronto found a way through as Avila made it 1-1. Things weren't level for long, though, as the home side's passing game paid off, and they regained the lead through a Richard Eckersley own goal. But the bottom club in the Eastern Conference weren't to give up without a fight. Daniil Henry climbed highest to restore parity again. The Canadians looked certain to get their first point of the season before heartbreak in stoppage time. Javier Morales led a Salt Lake attack before Jonathan Steele snatched the winner in the 93rd minute. Toronto remained rooted to the bottom in the Eastern Conference, having equaled the record for the most opening losses in MLS history. The win lifted Real up to second in the Western Conference, although they have played two games more than the teams around them. Elsewhere, a stoppage time equaliser from Pat Noonan salvaged a point for LA Galaxy against FC Dallas as the defending champions continued their stuttering start to the new campaign. Over in Australia, supporters of Brisbane Roar have been celebrating the club's second successive A-League title. In the history box for becoming the first team in A-League history to record back-to-back -back grand final triumphs. Brisbane's latest, coming courtesy of a stoppage time penalty from their Albanian striker Bursart Berisha in a 2-1 victory over Perth Glory. For head coach Angie Foster Koglu, the crowning glory of what turned out to be the end of his two and a half year spell in charge of the Queensland club. So the boys, uh, we've had a hard couple of days, as you can see by the sunglasses, um, but uh, they, they, they've earned it. They're, uh, I've said it many times, uh, they're a fantastic bunch of young men and uh, I couldn't be prouder of them. And I'm so uh, pleased that they got the rewards for all their hard work on, on the weekend. Of course, they don't do us any favours by leaving us so late, but we'll, we'll let that go. And uh, to everyone involved in the club, uh, as it's rightly been pointed out, it's not just about one or two people. The whole club contributes to the success, a lot of people work hard. Just a day after that speech came the news Brisbane fans had feared, that of Foster Conglu's departure following weeks of speculation. The Greek-born former Australia international resigning from Brisbane to sign a three-and-a-half-year contract at Melbourne Victory, citing the desire for a new challenge. A big challenge as well, despite the influence of star man Harry Kuehl, the victory hugely underachieved in the season just finished. I guess it's just part of my nature, but I'm a bit of a, a restless soul, and, I, you know, it almost became like people knew what to expect from me and my team, and, uh, you know, I, I guess... I'm always trying to prove a point about one thing or another. That's, I guess that's just my nature. And I just felt, well, OK, I, people know what, I've, what I can do and I've done here at, at Brisbane and uh, maybe I can show I've got other strings to my bow. And, you know, and, and maybe whilst job security in my job is probably paramount, it's something that doesn't sit well with me. And, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm better coaching on the edge. So, uh, you know, I decided to make that decision. But it wasn't a reflection on the club or the players in any way. While Melbourne will have to wait until October to find out if Poster Coglu is the man to revive their fortunes, Brisbane must begin life without him almost immediately. His former assistant Rado Vidasic has taken the reins at the Raw and will lead them in their two remaining group games in the AFC Champions League in May before beginning his preparations for what Raw fans will hope will be another title assault. To China now, where Nicholas Anelka is attempting to revive Shanghai Shenhua, who took on Shandong Luneng on Saturday. Struggling for form, they had to do without their player coach on the pitch after the 33-year-old former Chelsea striker picked up a thigh injury in training. There's a Chelsea connection at Shandong too. They're managed by Dutchman Henk Tenkata, who was assistant boss at Stamford Bridge. His side started the game level on points with Shenhua. It was a contest of few chances. This free kick was wasted early on by Jiang Kung for the hosts. Yuan Weiwei came close to a superb individual goal towards the end of the first half, but Shenhua goalkeeper Wang Delai was equal to it. That's a good save from Wang Dalei. Feng Renlian's cross almost found a way through for Shanghai, but it remained goalless at half-time. The second half was even less eventful. 
Shangdong Luneng managed to hold on for a point despite having to play for the last 10 minutes with 10 men. After midfielder Rodranta was forced off with an injury after they'd already made all of their substitutions. Since Anelka adopted his new role following the exit of Jean Tigana, Shanghai have only taken five points from four games and are stuck in mid-table. In Brazil, the Campeonato Paulista reached its semi-final stage on Sunday. Santos are targeting a third successive state championship title. They've knocked out Moggy Marim in the quarterfinals to earn an away tie with Sao Paulo, who'd lost out at this stage in each of the previous five years. And Santos came quickly out of the blocks, earning a penalty in the second minute. Paulo Miranda with the infringement. Neymar steps up to take the spot kick. 13th goal of the competition for the Brazilian superstar. These two sides were the top scorers in the regular season. Santos with 46, Sao Paulo scoring 42. But Emerson Liao's men struggled to get past the determined Santos defence. Sao Paulo had responded well to going behind, they'd had all the play. So it was a shock to the home support when Neymar picked up the ball to score his second of the match. Miranda left behind, keeper Dennis given no chance. The 20-year-old leading the race for the golden boot and getting booted off the ball for provoking Ivan Pires. The Paraguayan given a yellow card for the tackle teammate Cicero joining him in the referee's notebook for the sense. You can see why Pires was so frustrated, though for the neutral, Neymar's skill is wonderful entertainment. Early in the second half, Santos keeper Rafael had to be substituted. He'd suffered a strain in the opening stages of the match, but finally ceded his place to Arana. Neymar had already been kept out by the woodwork. Alan Kardec got the ball into the net, but it was disallowed. So would Santos be left to rue those missed chances to go three goals clear? Sao Paulo certainly hoped so and piled the pressure on the substitute goalkeeper. Finally, it paid off. Relayan beating Arana. The top scorer for the home team, now with 11 in the Paulista. That set up a grandstand finish, though Santos could be aggrieved as the goal was clearly offside. Justice served then when Neymar turned and fired in for his hat-trick. It put the match beyond Sao Paulo, who had to finish the game with 10 men after Cicero picked up a second yellow. For the third year running, Santos reaching the final of the state championship and a young star making his mark on the tournament. The defending champions will face Garani in the final. Claudio Marchisio is the latest winner of our goal of the week vote. His fine strike for Juventus against Roma in Serie A earning more than 80% of the votes in our global poll on goal.com. Each week we ask you to choose your favourite from five we've picked out from the programme. First on our list this week is another Juventus player, Montenegro and Mirko Vucinic's instinctive effort for Antonio Conte's team at Novara edged Italy's most successful side toward another league title. Goal two is by Antonio Notturino. The Milan midfielder's teasing run from halfway ending in a fine finish, the highlight of his team's 4-1 win at Siena. Our third pick is from the CONCACAF Champions League final. Argentine Daniel Ludueña's rasping shot for Santos Laguna against Monterrey. Eric Avila's classy strike is goal four. The Toronto midfielder's goal sadly not enough to prevent his side from slipping to another defeat in Major League Soccer. And finally goal five, Neymar. The Brazilian international at his brilliant best in the Paulista semi-finals. This the second of his splendid hat-trick against Sao Paulo. That's your list of five to choose from this week. 
To vote for your favourite, simply head for the video section on Goal.com. You can also follow the show on Twitter. On next week's Goal Show, do Inter hold the key to Milan's demise? A derby of significance at the San Siro. And it's the final of the Campeonato Paulista in Brazil as the state championship season draws to a close.